Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and we're going to do another vintage vehicle unboxing and assembly. We've done a few of these lately, more than I ever thought I would, but I've just gotten really lucky in the last few months finding vintage, boxed, and unassembled G.I. Joe vehicles. So, uh, when I can find these at a good price, I'm going to put these together. I've got my window behind me. It's still daylight out there. It will probably be dark by the time I finish this, so I'm backlit right now, but uh, that will not be the case by the time we finish putting this together. This time we are going to assemble the 1993 Cobra Invader from the Star Brigade subset. Now, I would not do this with a rare vehicle, uh, something from earlier in the line, uh, something that would probably be pretty expensive. But this is pretty common. Uh, there's not a great market for these. Uh, there are still plenty of them still in the box. Uh, so I don't think anything is really lost by taking this out. Plus, I got this at a price that was less than what I would have paid for a loose, complete example. So I think this is fair to take out and put together. This box is not sealed. It was sealed when I got it, but I opened it up just to look at the contents inside, make sure everything was okay. Uh, there was some stuff rattling around in there. Um, some of the parts have popped off of the plastic tree. That's kind of to be expected uh, with a vehicle this old, especially if it's been moved around and not stored very carefully. Uh, so some of the bits kind of rattle around in there, but everything is there. Some of the parts in here are a bit fragile, and it has some gold parts, and those may be susceptible to gold plastic syndrome. This could be the first assembly video where I break apart. I hope not, uh, but if I do, I'll just glue it. I don't care that much, it's the invader. I have the tools that I will need to put it together. Um, I have my clipboard uh, so I can use that uh, to cut things so I don't cut my table. Uh, so let's do it. Let's unbox the invader and put it together. All right, let's open it up. Um, and these 90s vehicles did this thing where they have a tray inside the box, a cardboard tray that has all of the pieces. So. There we go. I've got instruction sheet, uh, sticker sheet. Uh, we've got a sealed part of uh, canopy. Um, and then we've got, let's see, that's part of the body. Um, there's a gold piece that, honestly, it does feel kind of brittle. Yeah, these pieces, I don't know if they are. I don't know how something feels brittle, but, I mean, if you touch these, they kind of do. They, they feel like they could... Uh, they could break pretty easily. So I'll try to use some caution with those, but they may be hopeless. They may be so brittle that uh, they will snap under any pressure. We'll see. Um, more gold parts, the legs. Um, we've got, uh, looks like the uh, seat for the cockpit. Uh, missiles, because it does have a spring-loaded missile feature. Um, we've got um, uh, the spring-firing missile launcher. Uh, some gold parts that are still on the tree. I don't know, it might not be hopeless. Uh, maybe they will hold up. Uh, we've got an empty plastic tree that I believe the missiles were attached to, but they've all popped off. Um, and one more with all the wires and hoses and stuff. So uh, those are the pieces. So let's uh, look at the instruction sheet and start putting them together. All right, let's look at the instructions. Uh, one thing I like about doing these assemblies is um, being the first person to ever put this uh, toy together, um, I know that everything's really there, that the stickers are all there, uh, no parts have been swapped around, and sometimes um, when you get vintage toys, you just never know what a previous owner has done to them uh, before you can really look at them and inspect them. So uh, this, at the very least, I know where it's been, uh, I know that everything's there, and everything is as it should be. So, uh, let's see, step one is the cockpit assembly. Uh, we've got the um, hull, uh, we have the, uh, the pilot seat, uh, and we are supposed to place this in here. Let's see how this goes. Um, uh, line up front tab on the green cockpit, uh, that's this bit, okay, uh, with arrow inside black hull, then uh, fit side tabs into notches and hull. Okay, there's an arrow on here somewhere, where is it? 
Where's an arrow? I don't see an arrow. I found it. Oh, all right. Sorry, I found it. It's right there. Uh, where was it? Now I've lost it. Uh, where was it? See, I, I saw the arrow, and then I dropped the dang thing, and now I can't find it again. Uh, oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. I see it. Um, okay, so that the front goes there, uh, and these little tabs. I got it. I got it. Lines up like that. Okay, well, that's easy enough. That's lined up. All right, what next? Um, looks like they want us to assemble the canopy, um, and the green translucent... Uh, pieces are in here, so let's open the factory sealed bag and pull these out. Uh, okay, uh, and uh, with canopy locks facing up, yeah, um, fit the posts on the green canopy um, half onto the rear notches in the bronze colored hull top as shown. Okay. That goes that way. Uh, oh, okay. All right, I think I get it. So it kind of hooks under, like that. Okay, like so. That's an interesting way to do it. Except you got to do it right. Got to put it on the correct side. Uh, okay. Hell yeah! I think this one's gonna be easier than that AGP assembly. So and that goes like this, I believe. Uh, yeah. Okay. And let's see. It comes together like so, and locks. Okay. All right. Make sure the canopy uh, locks line up. The canopy locks appear to line up. Yes, they do. Okay. So. Next, now we have to attempt to put this on. Let's see, how does it go? We have, yeah, we have some tabs there that that's supposed to line up with. Now, this could be the first test of this plastic to see whether or not it's going to go on without snapping. Because uh, I'm going to have to put a little bit of pressure on it and... If it's brittle, uh, it could snap. So let's see. So far, so good. All right, one more tab to fit in. Come on now. Uh, it's trying, but it's not quite there. No, nope, it's popping out. These canopies get in the way, and I don't like them. They don't really even cover the whole top of the the vehicle. It's not a very good canopy design, if you ask me. And I know you didn't ask me, but I told you anyway. I have to assume the Pogo was just as much of a pain in the butt to assemble. These parts are all the same as the Pogo, uh, just in different colors. Um, but it, it's done. It's, it's assembled. Uh, and the canopy is staying on, and it functions as it should, but that, that was not fun. Uh, Alright, what's the next part? Okay, looks like we are supposed to take take this piece uh, and on it place uh, this gun and these nozzles. So I got to cut these off. This will be the first uh, parts that I cut off of the plastic tree. All right. Um, this vehicle is new to me. Of course, I was out of GI Joe long before 1993, um, and. Um, I think the Pogo uh, was new to me as an adult collector, too. Um, in 87, that was kind of the tail end of my G.I. Joe collecting. We did still stick around for a little while, but I never got the Pogo. Um, I just thought it was a goofy-looking thing. So uh, at that point, I wasn't trying to get everything. Um, I was just getting the stuff that I liked, uh, and I was doing a lot of customization at the time. So if I didn't like a, like a, a figure or a vehicle, I just skipped it. Um, before that, though, I really was trying to get everything. And I didn't get everything, but I got a lot of it. Um, and um, 
between uh, me and my brother and our friend Sam, that was a friend of ours in our neighborhood, we had nearly everything uh, from uh, 1982 up to, I think 1986 was the last year we were really trying to collect everything related to G.I. Joe. Um, we had almost everything except for the mail-away stuff. We never got the mail-away offers. Uh, none of us did. Like, none of the kids in our neighborhood really sent away for the mail-away stuff, and I'm not really sure why. Uh, maybe we just needed that immediate gratification of uh, getting the toys in the store. I don't know. But at any rate... Um, we did miss out on those, but yeah, we got loads of stuff, uh, most of the vehicles. Uh, our friend Sam, he had a lot of the um, the really big stuff. He had the USS Flag, he had the Terror Drone. Uh, my brother and I um, had a lot of the medium and smaller vehicles and a ton of figures. Um, Alright, that's all together. Uh, the gun, uh, the thruster nozzles. Uh, everything assembled there. So now, um, looks like we have to snap this onto here. Doesn't say that it goes any particular way, but uh, yeah, we'll just just press it on. Should yeah. Oh, that was easy. Hey, that was easy. Awesome. Something was easy. Great. Um, so my brother Eric um, is almost two years younger than me. Not quite, but close. And um, in our neighborhood, we had a friend named Sam. Uh, he was about half a block away down the street. Um, and during the summer times, we were um, at his house or he was over at our house every day. All right, let me make sure I do this right. And we had some fantastic G.I. Joe battles. Uh, we would put all of our toys together and just have these huge sprawling battles uh, usually in the backyard sometimes indoors um, yeah that worked hey and it didn't well no I take that back didn't work let's see how is this supposed to go uh, let's see yeah all right that slides up there come on All right, now I have had to put the legs on the pogo before, uh, and it sucks. It's not a good, it's not well engineered. It just isn't. I'm sorry, whoever, whatever Hasbro guy designed this thing, but it, it sucks. Um, and I'm really worried about breaking the tabs on this thing, trying to put this on. There's one. All right, we got two more to go. Uh, so anyway, yeah, we would uh, create these uh, scenarios and play situations that we would put our Joes in. Um, and uh, they tended to be really big. Um, and once he got the USS flag, uh, most of our missions tended to start out there. So we'd start out on the flag um, and we'd load up, you know, the killer whale and the tomahawk and... APC and uh, just load up figures and we'd send them out on a mission and mission during the summertime was often in the backyard um, Sam's backyard since he had the flag um, and then we'd send them out and they'd set up a, a base in some uh, jungle where they were having to uh, either fend off Cobra or uh, invade a Cobra stronghold uh, come on um, yeah, almost. I think we almost got it. Close, close, close. And uh, these missions would tend to last usually several days until um, everything had been blown up or we had accomplished whatever objective we set out to do. Alright, those legs are on. Good. And then next day we'd come up with something else okay i uh, gotta take some more parts off of the plastic trees um let's see what it calls what does it call for it calls for 
Let's see, this big hose. Um, oh, and the antenna, which is still on here. Let's go ahead and cut that off. Uh, and I haven't seen Sam since we moved out of that neighborhood when I was about, I want to say, 14 years old. And, uh, of course, we were all kind of out of G.I. Joe by then. Although I did continue to read the comic books for a while after I had given up the toys. Um, but ever since we moved, I have not seen Sam, uh, and I can't seem to find him anywhere on social media. I don't know what happened to the guy. I'd love to catch up with him, see how he's doing. Um, maybe he would be surprised that I have a G.I. Joe channel on YouTube. Maybe not. Um, but uh, I think it would be really awesome to catch up with him. So that's one regret I have is not keeping in touch with Sam. Um, of course, at the time, in the era before social media, um, you know, you couldn't just add somebody on Facebook. Um, you could get a phone number, but then people move and their phone numbers change. Uh, you lose phone numbers. So, yeah, that kind of thing happens. All right, now how does this work? Uh, this connects to that. Ah, I see. I think I see. Okay, this goes here. All right here and here. One thing that G.I. Joe vehicles did that I think is remarkable now is give us a lot of colors without paint. They rarely had paint uh, applications on the vehicles. There are a few that they did uh, and the few that did were pretty cool uh, but most of them they just used different colored plastic um, for different parts and just by using different colored plastic they uh, are able to really um, give us a lot of cool colors um, and despite having no paint applications they tend to not be too monochrome it says to put the missiles on so I'm gonna go ahead and do that even though I think that's really kind of too early in the assembly stage to put the missiles on. It says to do it, so I'm following the instructions. And i got to put the antenna on too. Alright. These missiles work with the spring-loaded missile launcher. Um, let's see. There's an extra missile, and I guess this one goes in the launcher. So we'll put the launcher on in a minute. Um, now we are supposed to put the antenna on. There's the antenna. Uh, and where was the slot for it? I just saw it. Uh, where was it? I was just looking at it. There it is. Slot for the antenna. But yeah, um, G.I. Uh, Joe was a big part of our lives, especially in the summertime uh, when we can get outdoors and we were just outdoors all the time. Um, and um, our backyards became jungles, they became the whole, whole countries that uh, Cobra would invade, uh, and G.I. Joe would have to come to the rescue. Um, uh, and despite having doing a lot of different uh, play storylines, um, there were a few that we really didn't do. Like, I didn't really do much with, you know, the spies, like Chuckles. Never had a whole lot of use for Chuckles. And, you know, the medics, uh, like Doc, which I really like Doc now, uh, but at the time, just didn't use him. Um, if I were, if I could travel back in time, I might suggest to myself uh, some alternatives that might have been fun. But you know one thing that we never did, I don't think we ever did, was recreate scenes from the cartoon or comic book. And we watched the cartoon and we read the comic books, uh, but we didn't see those as something to recreate. We just kind of made our own sort of alternate universe uh, with the things that we wanted to happen and the characters that we cared about. Um, but the comic book especially was a big influence on us. 
because uh, it had that, you know, that uh, kind of real military feel to it, um, uh, used uh, military terminology. And man, we just ate that up. I mean, adding um, kind of a, a pseudo-realistic um, military flavor to our playtime just made it seem more real. Uh, and it's, yeah, we loved that a lot. Okay, we've got, let's see. We've got three of small ones and of these green, little green wires and one big one. And I've got to make sure these go incorrectly. Insert curved end of small green propulsion tube into hole on the left side of uh, one landing leg. Bend tube and insert straight end into the hull as shown. Uh, repeat with remaining small green tubes and uh, landing legs. Okay. Okay. In according to the instruction sheet, these green cords go into the holes and the kind of in the knee of the legs. But man, I'll be dang if they don't want to go. Get in there. I don't want to break the thing, but it's just got to go. It's got to go in. Uh, yeah, I've looked at the instructions multiple times to confirm that this is the way it's supposed to go, and that is the way it's supposed to go. But the the holes that they have it, they're showing it being placed in, too small. Okay, I got it in. I got it in. It was not easy. I don't like this. This is this is more frustrating than the HEP assembly. Um, I don't like this at all. All right. I mean, it, it's it instructs you to bend the plastic, which to me doesn't seem like a great plan. Uh, wouldn't like to do this on a new toy, rather, let alone a vintage toy. Okay, that one's in. I'm having to use the needle nose pliers to get these wires in and I know it's not showing up very well on camera I'm sorry these wires are tiny um, and plus I have to do it facing me uh, but that's just that's just how it is let's see here all right how is that okay all right don't worry about it getting ahead of myself this one goes in here. It fits easily enough into the hull. If you can get the, there. But getting it into the leg, as the instructions show, it's not easy at all. So let's. Okay, come on. Come on. Alright, that's about done it. But yeah, that's a lot more pressure than I want to put on this toy. I don't like that one bit. Okay. One more. One more. Okay. This one, they just it just says to put it in the remaining hole, hole, holes on the hull. Like, so that's there. And then to, it'll have to go all the way around to this side and plug in there. Which seems a bit of a stretch. These missiles are in the way. It instructs you to put the missiles on in step five, um, or at least some of the missiles, um, and it's just too early because they're in the way. All right. Let's see if I can do this. Okay. All right. Oh, it's done. Wow. That that was a lot more difficult than it needed to be. Now let's put the parts back on that fell off or I had to take off. Uh, there's the tab for the antenna. All right. Missiles. Okay, um, now we have to put the spring-loaded launcher on. Let's see. Fit green missile launcher into landing leg as shown. Um, they All the legs are the same, so I guess it doesn't matter which one you put it in. Um... Which one do I want to put it in? Let's see. Let's put it on one. Let's put it on this one here. 
there. And then this, the missile that goes into it. Uh, let's go ahead and put this in. There. Snaps in. Let's test fire it. Fire. Ooh, yeah. All right. That worked. Okay. Uh, now, at last, it's time to put the stickers on. I think this assembly is taking longer than the others. It's just... Uh, not an easy vehicle to put together, and I'm sorry if that's boring for you, but uh, I never know how these things are going to go until until I get started. Okay, so there are the stickers. Um, let's orient this as it's shown. Um, there is a rescue sticker with an arrow that actually goes on the glass canopy. Is that real? Okay, yeah, that's the real deal. Okay. Um, Let's pull this off. There are two of them. Uh, let's see. But there's a ridge on that canopy, and it seems like a sticker should not go over that ridge. So I'm going to put it like this. It seems the right way to do it. These are paper stickers, not... Um, not vinyl stickers, not my preference. Let's see, and then, where does that go? Okay, we've got multiple of these Cobra Moonstrike stickers. Then, and one of them is supposed to go on the canopy. Um, oh, no, 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 it goes on here. Okay, all right, that makes more sense. So let's... Line it up and lay it on. I gotta say, I don't love it. I'll have plenty of comments about this vehicle when I review it. Um, I don't intend to review it while I'm assembling it. This is supposed to just be uh, an assembly video, but you know, I can't help but notice certain things while I'm putting it together. One thing I have to notice is that this thing takes a lot of effort for quite a silly vehicle. All right. I'll tell you, these paper stickers are not very forgiving if you don't lay them right the first time. Uh, okay. All right. And one of those Cobra Moon Strike. So I guess this is allegedly Cobra's attacking the moon. Uh, which is fine, whatever. You know, if you're gonna buy into the space stuff, you might as well buy into Cobra attacking the moon with a bunch of pogos. Um, okay, and then that one, okay, we've got, what is this? Uh, it's just some kind of warning sticker that goes somewhere. Okay goes goes like right under uh, okay it goes there these are stickers that are going on a vehicle that was designed for an entirely different set of stickers so um, may not necessarily work very well. So, I mean, now you can see... Sorry, I, I know you can't see these as I'm assembling them, so I apologize for that. Um, so, I, I gotta say, I have not greatly enjoyed um, this particular assembly. Um, now, I don't think the, uh, the fun is totally worn out of them. If I were assembling a, a better vehicle, I think I would still enjoy it, but it's the Invader, Star Brigade, it's Cobra, it's, it's, it's goofy, it's bizarre, it's a, it's a reissue of a vehicle that was already pretty strange the first time around, and they found ways to make it even stranger. All right. 
Uh, oh, I missed, uh, did I miss something? I think I did. That's okay. I can go back to it. Come on. There we go. I'm trying to get these stickers off without scratching the paper, since they're not final stickers. Okay. That goes there. Right. So anyway, I always uh, hoped that someday Sam would see one of these vehicles and recognize me and uh, say hello. It hasn't happened yet, but you know, someday it could happen. Uh, okay. By golly, there is one that's supposed to go on the canopy, and that is, just doesn't look right. Okay. All right, one thing at a time, one thing at a time. All right. Let's take off this vectored pod unit sticker. Now, these stickers don't even want to come off the sticker sheet very well. I'm, I'm marring the stickers trying to get them off. I don't like that. There's been much about this assembly that I've not enjoyed, so I'm sorry about that. All right. It's on. What next? Okay, the other rescue sticker, which looks to me like it should go right there. Uh, right there. Uh, these rescue arrows are pointed at the connector for the canopy, which kind of makes sense. Okay, and this is going to go like this. Okay, I've got a couple stickers left over and i got to figure out where they go. Um, and I only see where one of them goes. There's like an extra sticker on here. All right, this one allegedly goes on the canopy. Um, okay. It's. It looks like they want you to put one of these Cobra Moonstrike stickers directly on the clear canopy, but I'm just not going to do that. I don't like the look of that. I ain't going to do it. Uh, this one, move this missile out of the way. It's going to go here. And I don't care if it's right, it looks better. Looks better than the way they're instructing it. So I'm doing it the way I think it should be done. Um, but there's an extra sticker. I swear there's no place to put this. Um, well, I don't want to leave an extra sticker on the sticker sheet. Uh, it's one of these uh, vectored pod unit stickers. Um, and I'm going to put it there. Uh, I, look, look, see, look at this, look at this. There are two, it shows, one, two of the uh, vectored pod unit stickers on the instructions. But there are three on the sticker sheet. All right, that's uh, okay. I'm going to just blame 1993. It's 1993's fault. 90s, it's all your fault. I'm putting it here because that seems like where it's it's supposed to go. All right. There. Now, let's put this stuff back on that I had to take off, put stickers on. And that's it. It's complete, such as it is, the 1993 Cobra Invader, which is basically just the pogo in different colors and with a spring-loaded uh, missile launcher. <sighs> yeah, there it is. That was the assembly of the Star Brigade Invader. See, it's dark out now. Uh, so, um, 
I don't plan to get any more vehicles like this uh, in the near future that I would feel comfortable taking out of the box and assembling. It's really not something I normally do. I, I just got kind of lucky the last few months and so we've done a few of these, but I don't know when I will do this again. Um, but if I do it again, I'll try to find something better than the Invader. But thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing and assembly video more than I did. Um, this one was a lot more headache than a vehicle like this is worth, quite, quite frankly. And now I kind of wish I had just bought this thing uh, loose and complete. But, you know, at least I do have the benefit of knowing that uh, it's been assembled correctly by me. Uh, all the pieces are there, unbroken. The stickers are all applied as they're supposed to. So um, it's about as mint as you can get uh, for a review of it. Uh, I have no plans to review this in the near future, but I will be back soon with uh, more vintage G.I. Joe toy reviews. I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.